This video may contain offensive language or be frightening to some viewers. Viewer discretion is recommended. The cat walked slowly across the concrete, pausing to lick its paw in the middle. It sat there in the moonlight, just watching the skies and heavy rain. The clouds swirled, and the night was young. Perhaps it could find a confused mouse, or a drowning frog in this time. Its tail moved with anticipation on its hunt. A chain link gate swung open with surprising speed, startling the cat, resulting in a hissing fit. The man who opened it carried no thought of the terrible weather, cat, or anything else he was up against. Yelling an obscenity, he ran as fast as he could through the opening. That thing wasn't getting him. No way. He sprinted through the gate, and into the alleyway. He didn't know why, and he didn't know how, but something was following him. His first inclination was when he kept seeing this menacing figure at every turn. No matter where he went, he kept seeing it. He had thought that it might be a person following him at first, but that had quickly changed when he saw the height and shape of the being. Great, a fork in the alley. Mark sped towards the right. Not because of any good feeling, but because he knew whatever it was would catch up to him, no matter which way he went. The figure always seemed to be two steps ahead of him. Every time he turned around, it was there, silent as the night, just watching him. He could never make out its features in the rain, as it blurred his vision. He could tell it was tall, and seemed to have black and white skin, with the black covering the legs and torso. He had figured since it didn't move when it was being watched, he could look at it and just keep it frozen. It worked, but when he stared at it, he felt sick, like something was clawing its way out of him. His worst memories resurfaced in his brain. Among them, an embarrassing date, a lost pet, his sister's funeral. He had turned away and crawled for a few seconds until he could stand up again. Then he ran far from the creature, the thing that, like his memories, he could not seem to escape. Suddenly, Mark slipped on a giant puddle, interrupting his thoughts. Immediately, his jeans and hoodie became soaked on contact. Picking himself up from the water, the feeling to look back was too great. He turned around. There it stood, as real and frightening as ever. What really startled him was that it was closer because of his tumble, only a mere 20 feet away. Trying not to scream in case that triggered a reaction from the creature, he spun around and ran. The rabbit may not know of the fox, but it will sense danger when it presents itself. This was not unlike the feeling he felt right now. He didn't know what it was, or why it wanted him, but he felt in his genetic memory that this thing was a great threat. If this thing was chasing him, it had probably chased other people, which meant that nobody had gotten away from this thing ever, or else they didn't live long afterward to tell the tale. Mark ran out of the alleyway and onto the street. 
The rain had been coming down hard. He knew that, but until now, he hadn't realised how much. The street was overflowing with water. It was even coming onto the sidewalks. A flash flood. He wasn't really surprised nobody was out. Even if it was New York. With this weather, everyone else would be inside closed and locked doors. Leaving him alone with... Realising his mistake, he threw himself into the street while turning around. The figure had come to a stop, about ten feet from where he was. Then he went under the water. It was a little surprising being underwater in a city street, but at least it wasn't deep. Finding a hold in the asphalt, he pushed himself up and out of the water. Looking around, he found the street was going uphill, or downhill, depending how you look at it. This meant there was a slight current in the water, not enough to pull him away, but enough to make him unsteady. Mark looked around, frantic about the creature's whereabouts. In the pouring rain, he couldn't see ten feet in front of him. If the creature really wanted him, then he was about as vulnerable as he could have possibly been. Looking around, he finally spotted it, about a yard away. This close, and in the rain, it looked like something out of a horror movie. It stood around eight feet tall at first glance, but as he tried to find its head, it just seemed to get taller, like an endless ladder. Looking closely at it, he noticed that what he had originally thought was skin was actually a formal suit, complete with a tie. It was both comical and terrifying at the same time, much like a clown. It took an ordinary object and perverted it, twisting it into something sick. Upon even closer inspection, he realised it was far from perfect. It had large rips in the tie, and one sleeve was torn off about halfway up. It had many tears in the fabric, and was stained with several foreboding rust-coloured spots. But when he finally found its face, he screamed. It wasn't that there was no face. It was just so horrible that his mind immediately erased the image from his head every second he spent staring at it. He literally could not remember what it was, but it terrified him beyond belief. Snapping himself out of his trance, he moved to the right, narrowly avoiding a tentacle? How had he missed that? Ducking, he closely evaded decapitation from another. Remembering the current, he threw himself down the street, being swept away with the current down the hill. The entity did not follow. Floating down, unable to get a grip. Mark just tried to sit up while sliding on his backside. Looking ahead, he found to his horror that the creature was already at the bottom of the large hill. Using his feet to steer, he sped himself towards a lamppost on the sidewalk. Reaching out, he attempted to grab it, only to find himself falling grabbing the edge of the sidewalk, as to not be swept in. He realised there must be an open sewer grate below him, unseen in the water. Cursing, he tried to pull himself up. Looking to his right, he spotted the figure, about 60 yards away now. Gripping the concrete, he tried to heave himself up. Another quick glance to his right. 20 feet away. Giving it up, 
Mark let go and fell with the water. After four seconds of terrifying freefall, he hit the ground. Hearing a crack and experiencing extreme pain, he moved his left leg. It felt fine. Then the other. Once he moved it, he felt intense pain at the base of his thigh. That meant it was his hip. Shit. Trying to stand up, he found he couldn't. The pain was too unbearable. He started crawling, knowing he had to get away, dragging himself across the ground. He came to the sewer canal that carried rainwater and gunk under the street. Looking to his left, He thought he saw a light. He couldn't tell, as his vision was blurry. Funnily enough, it got cloudier. Then the sick feeling started again, along with the memories. Realising his fate, he tried to drag himself into the canal so he could drown. Surely it would be a more peaceful death than whatever this being had in store for him. Right as his body fell in, he felt a tendril grab him by the ankle and lift him out of the water. Flipping him right side up, he hung there, looking at the creature for the first time, face to face. He was filled with unimaginable terror, Its body radiated evil, and he vomited from the sickness again and again. Then he felt two claw-like fingers lightly position themselves on his eyes. He tensed up, realising what it was about to do. The woman opened her apartment room window, looking out into the rain... She thought she had heard screams, but there was silence, but for the rain now. There was no point looking outside anyway. There was nothing to see. The rain was coming down hard, and it obscured all vision. She thought about her mother, and the familiar sadness washed over her. She turned away from the window, sitting down by the lamp. She began to read a book. Looking up slightly, she was startled to think she had briefly seen a faint outline of a man outside her window. But that was impossible. Her room was on the fifth floor of a building. She laughed at her absurd thought. Then she saw the other shadow standing next to her own. This creature was the Slender Man. And now that I've read more about him, I know now that his normal prey is children and that that alone is the only reason he didn't waste his time on me. Even though he'd had the perfect opportunity to kill me, he didn't because I wasn't a child. 